your servant Eliezer won't be your heir, so count on it. Now here's how we know the word appeared visibly. Because pay attention to verse 5. And he brought him outside. That means the word and Abraham are inside Abraham's tent. So he's inside talking to him. He says, now come out. Come out of your tent because I want to show you something. And then he shows him the stars and said, look toward heaven and number the stars. If you're able to number them, then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Now comes verse 6. And he believed Jehovah and he counted to him as righteousness. Do you understand? It was Jesus, the word in his pre existence, appearing visibly to Abraham, whom Abraham trusted in and who justified Abraham. So this is why the Jews say that um, if you read some of the Talmud, it says that it's the Memra, like the word of the Lord. 100%. Right? Like wow, 100%. If you read the Targums, amazing. you'll see in these examples. And for Christians who don't need the Jewish interpretation, which is good, because if Jews who don't believe in Jesus are confirming this word is a divine person, that only shows how accurate and faithful the New Testament is. But I'm going to give you a verse as Christians why we know Jesus had to have showed up as Jehovah God to the patriarchs, as a Christian. Now, for the Jews, you use the Talmud, the Targumims. Now, watch here. Here it is. Wait, real quick. Real yes. quick. I just wanted to confirm for Sam. So we're okay. in the interlinear of the Hebrew. And uh, it does say, you know, after these things came the word of Yahweh to Come Abram on. in a vision, saying. Say. Wow. Mm -hmm. See? Exactly. Make sure you you were of translations that dropped the word saying. I don't know why they did that because... If you just drop the word, you're going to think, oh, well, God is speaking to him audibly yeah. Yeah. or, you know, it's command. No, it is a person sent by God called the word who then speaks to him audibly and appears visibly. Now, let me yeah. give you the proof from the New Testament that you must believe this is Jesus appearing. John 1, 18. I'm going to give you some verses from John to prove it. John 1, 18. Yeah. <clears throat> And, and Safras, make sure you're paying attention because you come to us all the time talking about the Jews never believed this or Jesus isn't in the Old Testament, all kind of stuff. Bro, this is gold. This is yeah. <laughs> and you can then show him later the Jewish Targums. They've been translating English there online. So you can see Jews who don't believe in Jesus will tell you that this God appearing, they called him Memra, the word of God. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. So the Jews saw that this word is a person sent by God who happens to be God. They saw it because the Hebrew Bible gives you plenty of examples. And if you want a few more, I can give it to you. But here is the proof for the Christian, for the Christian, that Jesus is the one that was revealing God to the patriarch and the prophets. No one has seen, has ever seen God. Now notice, no one has ever, that includes the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has seen God. And by the way, I had a debate with a Unitarian. I don't know if his name, I know I think his first name is Andrew. I don't know if his last name is Griffith or Griffin. Go watch our debate. He got discombobulated and pretty much lost the debate entirely because this verse rocked him. He didn't know how to respond to it. Go watch it. It's on my channel. It's on also Gospel Truth channel. He set up the debate. Now, why did it rock him? Because now notice, no one has ever seen God. So I asked the question, does this include the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yeah. But now you got a problem. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Now, he didn't believe Jesus preexisted. According to John 1, 18, if anyone has seen God at any time, that's because Jesus, who is in the bosom of the Father, made him known. So who was the God that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and Isaiah saw? Now, remember, he believes the New Testament. If you tell me it's not Jesus, you're saying John contradicts the Old Testament. Because John says, no one at any time can know God unless Jesus shows up and makes God known to them. You see that right there? That's right. So you cannot escape that from the New Testament, Jesus was there active before he became flesh as the God that they saw, whom they worship, who's called the Word of God, Word of Jehovah, the Angel of God, the Messenger of God, Messenger of Jehovah, and various other names. And now, to show you where Jesus himself says, Abraham and I saw each other. Now, I know Chris and Avery know this, so sorry for taking too much time, but to help the others. Go to John 8, 39 and 40. Here's a, again, ties in with, you can be ethnically a descendant of Abraham, but not truly his seed. John 8, 39 to 40, because the Jews say, we are sons of Abraham. And Jesus says, no, you're not. 
Why, why aren't they the sons of Abraham? Notice, they answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were. So here's the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. If you were Abraham's children, you'd be doing the works of Abraham uh, that Abraham did. So you catch it? To be a true son of Abraham is to believe like Abraham and act in obedience like Abraham. And who did Abraham believe in? The word. Who did he obey? The word. So if you truly are sons of Abraham, you will do what Abraham did. But now you see, to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. So here he's saying, unlike you who are trying to kill me, Abraham didn't try to kill me. That's how I know you don't belong to Abraham. Did you catch it? Yep. You're trying to kill me. Abraham didn't try to do this. So mm -hmm. Abraham didn't try to kill you, Jesus? No, he did not try to kill me. But you're trying to kill me, which is proof you don't belong to him. But now, Abraham's been dead for 2,000 years. What do you mean Abraham did not do this, did not try to kill you? Because as someone in the comment section brought up, he later then says, John 8, 56, truly I say to you, oh, I'm sorry, John 8, 56, he says, your father Abraham rejoiced at seeing my day, and he saw it and was glad. That's John 8, 56. Now, let's break that down for those hearing it for the first time. Abraham saw Christ in two ways. He saw him prophetically, God making known to him his coming, that the Messiah is coming to die for your sins, to atone for you and save you. That's one way. But there's another way he saw him. He saw him face to face. Now, the Jews understood that Jesus is saying that he and Abraham saw each other face to face, that you saw Abraham and saw his reaction. Because how do you know how he reacted? You're saying he rejoiced and was glad. How do you know that? Because in 57, they say, you're not yet 50 years old. Man, you're not even 50. You've seen Abraham? He's been dead for 2,000 years. What in the world are you talking about? You saw him? Do you saw his reaction? Now, Christ could have corrected them. He could have said, that's not what I mean. What I mean is, God revealed to him his coming. No, he actually confirms they got his point. Yeah, I did see him. But here's where you're wrong. I may not look 50. But don't let my physical appearance mislead you. I'm much older than 50. And that's where 58 comes in. Most truly I say to you, truly, truly I say to you, before Abraham came into being, I am. I'm older than 50 because I was there before your father was born. I was there when he was born. And I continue to be long after he's died. Unlike him, I ever lived. And that's how I saw him and saw his reaction. That's beautiful. I uh, just want to give a shout out really quick to Aleko for uh, the 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 gift. Thank you so much. God bless you. And God bless everyone who's been giving in the stream so far. Uh, it, it goes a long way. So thank you guys so much. Sam is up here giving some, dropping some gems as usual. You, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of gems, you want me to show you where the Bible says Moses saw Jesus and left Egypt for the sake of Jesus? Oh, Please. my word. Come on, Sam. Where are you from? Sam's going crazy, isn't he, Sam? Sam, like, no Sam, way. Let me ask you a question here. If, if a Jesus was that important here, why wasn't his name mentioned in the Old Testament? It are would have been sure, making so easy. It would be sure, so easy. Hold on, hold on. I will show you that prophetically, it says Jehovah will become Jesus. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. Why is his name not in the Old Testament to make it well, easy for everybody? Yeah? If you're asking me the name Jesus itself, well, it's no, a Jehovah. Yes, what do you ask? Yes, okay, but friend, let me first clarify what you're asking before you get excited. I know you're excited. If you're yes, asking me whether the name Jesus is there, well, in what sense? Are you saying that it says Jesus? Well, yes and no. Because no. number one, it says Jehovah will become Jesus. I'll give you that. Just be patient. And secondly, there is a man that God said will be a sign of the Messiah. And his name is Jesus, son of Jehovah, who is righteous. And he says, this man, Jesus, who is the son of Jehovah, is righteous, who is a priest, he's a picture of the one to come. So by being a picture, he foreshadows that the one to come is Jesus, the son of Jehovah, who is righteous. But give me a time to show this because I just made a claim. I'm going to prove it. If you guys are interested, I can go into this. Prove it. This? Prove it. Okay, now before I do. I want you to go to Hebrews 11, 24 to 28. Because Oh, I want my you to gosh. All this is Where Christian. Moses left Egypt. I go on, uh, Christians, we know about John 8, 39, 40. But I don't see enough Christians using this. Moses left Egypt for Jesus. 
because he saw Jesus and gave up everything for Jesus. Hebrews 11, 24 to 28. I'm going to get to you, Raz. Just hold on. Sir, man. Come on, man. Okay, well, give me a chance. I'll come with you. Just wherever you want to take me. Just don't take me to Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> come to Asia. Kashmir. Look at this, Raz. Uh, Raz. Stop. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeing, fleeting treasures. And now here is the key. Mm -hmm. Now here is a little translation. NIV captures it, but I'm going to explain what it means. He considered the reproach of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt for he's looking for the reward. Did you catch it? Wait a second. Wait, 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 Sam. He considered the reproach of Christ? Yep. How can Moses know about Christ? Yeah, because in verse 27, it says he saw Christ who is invisible. Who's, and who's wrote this? Hebrews. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, Yo. for he endured at seeing him who is invisible. Yo, hold he on. He saw second. the invisible Christ appear to him visibly. Because here, when it says reproach of Christ, the meaning is he accepted being scorned, ridiculed, mm -hmm. beaten, mistreated for the sake of jesus christ he said christ is worthy that i lose my wealth and position and status and be persecuted because christ is greater than my status and wealth so i'm willing to give it all up for christ because it says he saw him who is invisible wow what right there so who's wrote the scripture who's, oh, who's oh, wrote the scripture? oh my gosh yo Sam, who has wrote the scripture Wait, can you be quiet for a second and let me bask in the glory of my holy oh scriptures? My word. Shut word. your mouth, Kaffir, while I bask <laughs> in the gems that have just been released. Sam, one more time. Break this down. Yeah. In fact, if you want to see an excellent breakdown, use NIV. Just open up okay. NIV. You'll see the excellent breakdown. As you break it down, it's saying that Moses saw the invisible Christ who appeared to him visibly. And when he saw him, he then was willing to give up everything for Christ and accept being beaten, rejected, and persecuted because his love for Christ was greater than his love for the world. Read it. Now, see how NIV translates it? By faith, Read Moses, it. when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as greater, as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He, pers he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. So uh, Abraham saw Jesus. Moses saw Jesus. They all saw Jesus. And if you want the icing on the cake to prove Moses saw Jesus, go to 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 4. Guys. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 to 4. I am you want the icing on the cake? Watch. Here you go. Uh, for, for the people who like to clip things and things of this nature, please, uh, you, guys can, you guys can use the stream how you want. What was it? 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 10, verses 1 to 4. Now, you guys want proof yeah. that... Jesus was the one that appeared to Moses and was <laughs> guiding Israel out of Egypt. First Corinthians 10 verses 1 to 4. Here it is. Guys, cut out this section of the stream. Make it its own video because this, uh, this is beautiful. All right, here we are. I'm still in the NIV. I, I mean, yeah, that's that fine. Cool? Okay, here right. NIV is okay. All right. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied, that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. So who was in the cloud following Christ. them, eating them, nourishing them? Christ. And so Hebrews and 1 Corinthians state, it was Christ our Lord in his preeminent existence that appeared to Moses and guided Moses and Israel in the cloud out of Egypt through the desert into the promised land. 
Yeah. Now, do you want me to give you another one that's going to blow your mind away? Hey, man, we got nothing but time, man. All right. Go to Jude. It's only one chapter. Yes. Okay, watch this one. Now, here's where you're going to get blown away because the oldest extent copy of Jude, the oldest copy, P72. And if uh, someone wants to look it up, you can. It's You go to Google, put P72. This is the oldest copy of Jude that's extent. And it's from the late second century, early third century. I'm going to tell you how it reads. But before we do that, Jude is just one chapter. Okay, just one chapter. So you just do Jude 1. Just put yeah, 1. Just... Open up. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to read for us 4 slowly. So Raz right. and Saf can get it. Now, come back if you want me to answer Saf, where Jesus is prophesied by name. Okay. Read for us 4 if you can, brother. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Now, who's the only master and Lord we have? Jesus Christ. Okay, keep it in mind. Because now in verse 5, it's going to explain. Now, let me give you the context. Judah's warning that false prophets, false teachers have crept in and that God is going to destroy them because that's his pattern. Like God destroyed the immoral and the false prophets and teachers in the past, he's going to do that to these false teachers and those who are immoral now. So he's going to give examples as a warning. Hey, you remember what happened in the Old Testament? That's what's going to happen to these perverts, right? Yeah. So he's going to give you three examples from the Old Testament, what God did to the immoral and false teachers, right? Uh, but now read verse 5, his first example. Verse 5. Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Wait. Jesus is Jesus. the one who brought them out of Egypt but then destroyed them in the desert? Jesus. Oh, wow. Now let crazy, me explain. Man. Well, hold on. I'm going to get you some meat, guys. Hold on. Let me explain why this reads Jesus. In the King James Version, New King James Version, it says Lord. But you can tell who the Lord is from verse 4. The mm -hmm. Lord is Jesus Christ, so he's the Lord of Savior. Now, why do translations like NIV and ESV have Jesus? Because our earlier copies of Jude have the word Jesus. So they went with the earlier copies where it reads Jesus. But do you know that the earliest copy of Jude? The oldest surviving copy we have of Jude, it's P72. Do you know what that says? I just sent you the link in private. I wrote an article on this. Do you know what the earliest copy of Jude 5 reads that we've discovered? You know what it says? What? That yeah. the God Christ Jesus delivered them. Wow. In the earliest copy of Jude, verse 5, it says, Theos Christos, that it was the God Christ. Christ the God. It was Christ as God who was there delivering them. This is insane. Right? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, and if you, if you, Avery, if you check your private, yeah. I just gave you the link to the article where yeah, I, I just posted it in the chat. Up. All right. Now, if you, I'm going to give you the verse in private so you can plaster because I can't do it. Hold on. Let me show you what the verse is. This is a translation of P72, the oldest surviving copy of Jude. The oldest surviving copy of Jude, this is what it reads. So here it is in private chat if you want to plaster it. You'll see it says, but I want to remind you.